Welcome back to The Extract. Once again, I'm Kyle Meyer, and next to me is uh, Oliver Hogg. Oliver, welcome. Hello, thank welcome. you very much. The uh, Oliver is, uh, he's, you know, a proprietor, a winemaker at this little winery, this uh, place that, uh, you know, they make okay wine, <laughs> but they only make, you only make white wine, huh? You make red? Yes. No, 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 no. I make no red. Yeah, no, yeah. Red, you no, only no. make white wine. So, so you don't really make any great wine, right? Because uh, all great uh, wine uh, is red, no, right? You know, yeah, come on. Everybody's I scared. mean, so, so you, you make Taking some... Even though we make Riesling, and Riesling is great. And, you know, and, it's, and, it's, it's, it's a typical right here on the Mosul. Is, is, is Riesling good wine? Well, let's drink it. Yeah. You know, my grandma, you know, had a Riesling once, and she, oh, really? she liked the nice fruity Riesling. And she got hundred, huh? And she got <laughs> Riesling. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously though, uh, Weingut Fritzhag, which, uh, in case uh, in case you didn't know, is in fact one of the greatest, uh, at least white wine, no, greatest wineries uh, in the world. Uh, okay. It is a fabulous wine growing estate. Uh, Oliver is one of the most gifted winemakers in Germany. Um, his uh, his father and his brother also extremely gifted uh, winemakers and grape growers for well, what does it say on the back? Uh, site sixteen oh five. Sixteen oh five. Okay, wow. so only about like four hundred and something years. <laughs> Yes, yes. Um, That's amazing. A long time. So you're you're the latest in line. Yes. Right. Okay. So uh, you took over when? 2005, is it? Right. 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 Started four in the harvest, but has been just looking around and just started. Mm. And five was the first vintage. Yes. Yeah. So right. uh, how was how was Dad? Was he kind of like, okay, son, here's the keys to the car. Don't crash it, or was he like... No, no, no. You know, my father made really a great job. It is not easy. Quite often at the Mosul, you know, the, the, the generation is not is not willing to give you the, really the key. But he yeah. said, you know, now you're responsible for the winery. You know my number. You know where I'm living. So call me if you need me. <laughs> and this is really great. And, uh, you know, you're young. You have uh, a lot of ideas. You want to actually... You want to try to, to move to the whole world and so on. And uh, But in the end, sometimes you look for somebody, you know, has 50 years of experience, who has, who has actually uh, who made a lot of vintages, who saw a lot of vintages, who actually he made vintages with nearly no grapes, with a high acidity, unripe vintages. He lost vintages because of weather and so on, you know. And he had so many um, uh, things happened. And uh, just to ask him, you know, to make sure that you're in the right way. And uh, But as well, he's, he, he, he always, uh, uh, if I made something new, he said, oh, I don't think I would, be, I would have not done this, uh, this step. But you, it's your choice. And afterwards as well, and this is great, you know, he came and said, wow, the wine is tasting well. Uh, congratulations me, we gave a good thing. And uh, this is, you know, as well for you, I'm somebody who's young, stepping into the business, and uh, uh, is a great thing. No, and, and to hear that from your dad, that's like a big deal. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> that's huge. All right, but you did have a little experience working with these very distinctive slaty soils here in, in, the, in the middle Mosul. Yes. And uh, particularly, you've been uh, kicking around the slate on the Brownenberg Mountain for, for years yes. prior. So can you, can you talk a little bit about the specific soil uh, on the Brownenberg Mountain, what makes these wines so unique and so special? Well, our, all our wines. I decided, uh, you know, when I stepped into the wine business, I decided just to uh, uh, buy vineyards or to own vineyards which have the typically slates, the blue slates, these rough soil. You know, if it rains, if it is warm and it rains afterwards, then you have the smell of the minerality, you have the smell, the smell of the soil. And if you run into the seam, you know, if you made it once, then you're absolutely, you get crazy about the things. It's not easy mm -hmm. because it's really very, very steep, very labor intensive. Everything is handwork. You have to turn all grapes. You have to do everything by hand. But in the end, if you taste the wine, if you get the minerality, if you feel it and if you taste the wine, I think uh, um, then actually you can realize a little bit uh, why you're doing this job. And it is a rough soil. It's almost, I describe it a little bit as a poor soil. Mm -hmm. Even in the Brown Berg is one of the mountains with the highest amount of slate. So it's, we don't have clay, or a lot of organic material or limestone. It is just slate. The roots have to go very deep. Sometimes we just have a meter or two meters till the mm -hmm. rocks are coming. And it's hard for the wines to survive. But if it is hard for them, then actually they work even stronger and take more minerality and more extracts from the soil. Mm. Are there are there a lot of uh, talking about the vines surviving and, and the fact you have this like really serious steep hillsides and this complete lack of soil? Um, but you have a fair bit of older vines. We have, property, we have. Huh? Well, so, we so, have. So the vines can be kind of happy there. 
Yes, yes, yes. But uh, actually, uh, to be honest, we had a recultivation uh, uh, almost 30 years ago. <laughs> And um, but now the wines are in a wonderful age. So when we had the recultivation, we found vineyards. So we had roots of 30, 40, 50 meters. It's amazing. You cannot imagine. Really, we didn't. We did. We didn't saw that it is that the roots can be so long. But you know, they're just moving over the um, over the rocks, uh, looking for water for for the food and, and to survive. And uh, but as well, we still have uh, some older, some vineyards with older wines mm. up to uh, 80, 90, sometimes 100 years, a few parcels. And it's amazing. You have these loose bunches, these great grapes. And, and with the young wines as well, very good. But they are like kids, you know, yeah. you always have to take care, have to take out some. They want it. They have a lot of power structure. So they have to. <laughs> uh, to push the brake a bit, as I tell them, you know, and look for quality and uh, to take care of all the things and work very careful like a child. And but then as well, uh, they they show you the potential. Right. The, okay. Now, and with these soil types, when we, when we look at a picture of the euphor, and we'll flash a picture of the vineyard up on the screen for everyone home so they see it. But so you have the euphor, which is this one whole vineyard, and then what I think what you kind of refer to is the eyeball. Of the euphor, yeah. the euphor soniner. Right. Okay. Right, right, right. And so, so why, what makes the middle, this eyeball of this vineyard, uh, so different than the rest of the euphor? Well, I think in the end, the whole mountain is an absolutely Grand Cru vineyard. Uh, just, yeah, oh, I forgot to mention, yeah, it is all Grand Cru. Uh, just, uh, just to describe why it's called Sonnenur, the former name was Brauneberger euphor. And in the middle of the mountain, they built around about 100, 120 years ago, a sundial. Uh, a very uh, famous honored guy, he spends his time on sundial and, uh, and these sundials have been just built in the best vineyards which are 100% south facing. And to honor this guy, you know, they call the surrounding of, uh, of the Sonnenur uh, with the addition of Yufa Sonnenur. So Yufa Sonnenur is a single vineyard and Yufer, Yufa Sonnenur, as I said, is maybe for us, the high dot, a little bit smaller yields, talk about a really small amount, we're talking mm -hmm. even a high, uh, about high amounts of of yields and so uh, a little bit longer hang time we gamble a little bit higher and that's making it is not a huge difference but maybe this is the idol than on the euphor euphor we mm -hmm. keep a little bit more traditional mosel crispy like with the animation and sonnenur a bit more powerful creamy and you know talking about creamy wine still crispy but a little bit right. more depth and extracts yeah. creamy relatively speaking right <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so, these are riveting bracing wines the um uh I also want to get into a little bit because we, we talk about you know Riesling as a great conveyor of terroir, and, and and that sense of terroir to me arguably is no stronger anywhere in the world than in the Mosul. Yeah. We, we have this delineation of flavors, and then so in the winery, what do you do to to convey that clarity of flavor from the vineyard? You know, is it like less is more? You know what I mean? Like in, 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 when you're, so when you're wine cellar, making, yeah, yeah, the cellar, yeah. Well, for sure, you know. Um, there is Mosul on the label, and in my opinion, there should be Mosul in the bottle. So at least uh, I think the wine is made in the vineyard. We not we make it nothing. It just keeps the quality in the cellar. We mm -hmm. select very strong in the vineyards. We try to select for the different wines for the state, for the village, or for the cabinet, or for spare houses or gold capsules, uh, trump berries. I think this is the most important part. And in the cellar, you just can keep. We were very careful. And um, and uh, very slowly, uh, and we do no fining and no things, so it is rather simple. And um, we do some, even the uh, fruity wines, we do a bit more in stainless steel. Um, there's often the question why. It's quite simple. I think with the change of the climate, I personally realized we have enough power from the structure, uh, yeah. from the vineyards and structure. You know, the wines have power. We we, we wait a little bit longer till they fully ripe. And though we want to keep a bit of freshness in the cellar. And even for the fruity ones, in stainless steel, you have the CO2, the nicely uh, filigreed acidity, and then you can chill down the wine, stop at the points you like to have them. You need a low amount of sulfur to protect the wines and to keep them fresh. And, um, and for the dry on the other side, though we, we, we use as well a little bit of, uh, of wood, but it is not fresh wood. It is, uh, so it's uh, old wood casks up mm. to 50, 60, 70 years old, 1,000 liter barrels uh, with wood from our region, old barrels, just to have more, a little bit of, no, a bit of more micro oxidation of these traditional kind of wines. They are not like the young fresh wines. They're not very fruity, very intensive, uh, very flowering. They're more settled. And, may, and for me, this in combination sometimes 
with, uh, with the wines uh, which are coming from the stainless steel and dry range. This is nice. This is the nicest job to make the cuvées, to taste the wines. And, uh, and as well, they both fermenting very slowly with spontaneous uh, yeast. So yeah. it's, uh, it gives the wines uh, absolutely fantastic flavor. But we want to try to keep them still fine, lively, precise. You know, my father and me, we are both the guys. We are not existing just for one class. We like to have a second or a second. <laughs> Four. <laughs> or a fourth or the bottle. You touched on uh, the fact that there are uh, multiple styles made from this one particular vineyard. Uh, we got a couple minutes left. I want to talk about, um, so how many times do you go through the Eufer to make these different styles of wine? I.e., you're making maybe six different levels of quality or fruitiness from the vineyard. Does that mean you're in the vineyard six, seven, eight different times and kind of picking these grapes this day? I mean, tell a little bit, uh, tell the folks at home a little bit how that works. No, at least so, uh, not six, seven times. So <laughs> we go two to three times. It depends a little bit on the vintage, depend on the vintage and uh, the autumn conditions when you go into harvest the grapes. But at least we go a little bit earlier uh, uh, to harvest sometimes a cabinet with a bit more crispy acidity with a lighter uh, potentially alcohol and to have the crispiness, the typically fruit and the other grapes will leave for a spare auslese or for a dry style GG. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then actually as well, if we go a second time, then we have two or three buckets to select for the healthy grapes because we just like to have the healthy for the dry wines yeah. and the grapes with ripeness or with, with, with uh, botrytis or whatever for the, for the auslesers or for the um, gold capsules, whatever. This is quite individual, you, you know, you have no recept because each parcel is each year different. Yeah. And, um, and uh, I always realize uh, if I make a plan at the end, uh, the plan is, is, is changing, <laughs> it's moving, you have to be quite individually. Right, and, right. Um, but you have to select. But uh, as well for state wine or for cabinet wines, we have vineyards which are very good traditionally, but they're a little bit lighter in style. Mm. They have maybe more the breeze from the air, a bit yeah. higher, yeah. not always just south facing. We have a wonderful southwest facing vineyard. And these vineyards is always is up to uh, 88, 90, 92 crowd oxle, but a fully ripeness, a very long hang time, always a breeze of the air and very healthy grapes. And this is an enormously uh, a fine kind of tasting and uh, and uh, yeah a lot of things are done just by the stomach you know right yeah your, your gut instincts right but what a labor of love you know making these multiple passes through these vineyards that are like this where you could like trip and fall at any moment and just like doop, 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 doop. it's amazing the work that you guys do uh, I, every time every time I go to Germany I'm truly amazed at the vineyards and the and the effort and the labor that you put in um, Oliver that was a quick 12 minutes <laughs> <laughs> that was Thank awesome. You. Thank you so much for stopping by and visiting today. What a and, pleasure. Yeah. And by the way, congratulations on the new releases. They're Thank absolutely you. smoking. For your people. So we did some Mosul. Have a look at the vineyards and uh, see how steep it is. I think you just can imagine it if you have been there. Thank you very much. Yeah, Looking just, forward to see you. Just tie a rope to one of the vines so you don't. <laughs> oh, I oh, got that. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, nothing. It's glass. <laughs> <laughs>